So it's gonna open today? No, so there is a, a really big boulder up um, Rainbow Curve right now. Oh. The trail crew and some of the road guys are trying to get that out. They're planning on maybe blowing it up. So. Oh, really? It is 11 o'clock in the morning and welcome back to the channel. The snow from yesterday, it's melting quite quickly now. This morning when I passed, there was quite a big layer of ice or snow, but it's now almost gone. So I think uh, it's melting, but I just don't know what's gonna happen next and if there's more snow coming. I am going to a outdoor shop and see if I can get myself some um, warmer gear. <laughs> So I don't know if I mentioned that in the previous video, but um, Revit is sending me some uh, warmer gear, but I asked them to send it more north from here because, well, I didn't really see this weather coming. Uh, I underestimated Colorado a little bit. It happens. Mountain man outdoor store. I hope they also do mountain women. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing all right, thank you very much. Thermals. Ah, yes. So thermal tops, uh, women's, and then thermal pants. Yeah. Um, there's also the full union suit. Uh, there's also Carhartt leggings, which are a little bit more expensive, but they're okay. very popular. All right, all of this should keep me warm for the next coming rides. Anyway, let's have a little look in Nederland. So this town, it, it wasn't originally called Nederland. Uh, it had a few names before that. It started as a trading post between Native Americans and early European settlers. And then there was some mining booms going on. And at some point there was a Dutch mining company that got the rights to one of the mines. So then some Dutch miners came over and I don't know, apparently they, they dropped the name Nederland a few times. And it's stuck. And now this town is called Nederland. The Nederlands police department over here. So this is the town hall. Look at that. 1874. Nederland, Colorado. Welcome, Nederland. Home of the Panthers. I don't know about Panthers, but the locals did tell me that uh, in the last few weeks, um, six dogs have been killed by, uh, by cougars, mountain lions. So they are definitely around. Oh, and actually this morning, a guy said that uh, there was a moose walking around town. How cool is that? I didn't get to see it, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, there's mooses, there's bears, there's mountain lions, all sorts of animals that I'm not used to having around. Anyway, there's one more interesting place that I wanna, I wanna show you here because Nederland here is quite famous for frozen dead guy. <laughs> so I'll tell you the story. I'm now uh, walking towards the shed where they keep frozen dead guy. So there was a Norwegian man who died in 18, 1889, I believe. And his grandson then transport, or immediately put his body on ice and transported the body to Los Angeles. Uh, where they put him on uh, liquid nitrogen to keep him like that and eventually in uh, 1993 I believe they moved the body here to Nederland and they put him on dry ice so they brought his body here in the hopes to build their own cryonics facility but then the grandson actually got deported from the States because his visa expired and then his mother so basically the frozen dead guy's daughter, I guess. Um, she put him in the backyard garden shed. And that's where he still is. And apparently the family still pays $9,000 per year to, to keep him on ice. So they bring about a thousand pounds of dry ice every two weeks <laughs> to keep his body uh, frozen. And well, the shed is supposed to be somewhere here. Oh, I think it's here. 
crazy. Although this might be only the touristic one. I'm not sure if this is the actual shed um, where they keep him. But um, yeah, I think this is just for pictures. I think he's actually somewhere else. But that's a, that's a coffin. Oh, and then there's another, another coffin here. Frozen dead guy. Pretty bizarre, right? But the, the people here in town, they've really embraced this guy. And there is now an annual festival in March where they celebrate Frozen Dead Guy. And apparently then it's actually allowed to go in the real shed and, I don't know, look at the frozen body. The race course would test these competitors' strength, their stamina, and their willingness to get really filthy. It began with the Mountain of Death, followed by the hairpin turn of sorrow. Then the coffin riders were required to exit their coffins and spin five times around a stick before encountering the dread log of shame. If the coffin racers survived this, all that remained was the bubbling cauldron of mud before crossing the finish line. A cardboard coffin. Yeah, that's, that's right. about as cheap as it comes. We're trying to be uh, eco-friendly in the way we do the races. <laughs> low tech. Yeah. You sure that thing's not going to fall apart when you when you start? We're not sure. It was time to bid a fond farewell to Netherland. Here's hoping that one day they'll manage to reanimate old Grandpa Brito so that he can leave that tough shed and take part in the annual party that honors this very frozen dead guy. So yeah. Um, that's uh, Nederland, Colorado. There you go. Wow, the weather has changed drastically overnight. All the snow has melted. <laughs> what a difference. It's also a lot warmer than when I got here, of course. The plan for today. I am going to ride to Wyoming today. So I am leaving Colorado and uh, getting into Wyoming. That's the plan. And before I uh, cross the state border, I am going to cross the Rocky Mountains National Park. So there's going to be some high passes again today, I think. But the weather looks good, at least here. <laughs> but hey, that was last, uh, last time I also rode up Pikes Peak with weather like this. And a few hours later, there was a snowstorm. So <laughs> you never know, but uh, at least the day starts, starts well. So I'm happy with that. When I get to the Rocky Mountain National Park, then I'll get the map out and show you a bit uh, better. Oh, there we go. There is the Rocky Mountain National Park. Wow, it's beautiful here. So, so pretty. Trail Ridge Road to Grand Lake, tempor closed temporarily. Oh, I'm not sure. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good and you. I, I don't understand it. It's the, the Trail Ridge Road is closed? It's closed about eight miles up as of right now. So what is everybody doing? Just ride until there and come back? Correct. They're plowing snow up there, so. Oh. I don't know how long that's going to take. But it might be possible that the, it'll be clear today. It's a possibility. We just don't know 100%. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try then. All right, well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. They're plowing snow. Uh, I'm gonna try it because if I can't pass here, yeah, I have to do a massive detour. Um, and I don't get to see the whole Trail Ridge Road, so. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just go. See how far I can get. I'm like, why is this car standing in the middle of the road? <laughs> There's some deer here. Look at the little deer. Hi. Oh, they're not impressed. Oh, here it is already. Yeah, it's closed. Uh, I was hoping that there would be 
some people working here that I could ask, like, will it might open or not, but... Hmm. Let me at least now just take the map out, so I can show you kind of where I am, and also figure out <laughs> what I'm gonna do now. I left this morning from Nederland, and my plan is to reach, uh, where is it, this, this town today, Centennial, just here in Wyoming. And I'm now here in the Rocky Mountain National Park. And I don't know how well you can see that, but this is the road that I wanted to take across. It's the only road. Now that I can't take that one, I have to backtrack all the way around. And then probably take the 14, I'd say. I think that's the only other way. Because this is the map that they gave me at the entrance and you see so this is the Rocky National Ro uh, Rocky Mountain National Park and there's only one road across no that's not true there's another one the Old Fall River Road that's actually a dirt road that's also closed so there's no other way I can tell you how to get around really yeah hi I'm hi Sue. <laughs> hi Sue okay how do I We're get around trying to go. I I'm trying to get to the other side okay it's closed yeah the only way you can do it is to go down here and take this all the way to I-70. It's going to take you an hour and a half. Yeah, this is a very small... So from Rocky Mountain National Park, we're on yeah. 36. You have to take 36 down to I-70. Oh, no, but I'm, I'm heading, I'm running to Wyoming. You're going to Wyoming? I'm going north, yeah. So I was thinking I'll probably have to take this oh, one. So you take this to Loveland. Yeah, safe travel. Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, <laughs> That's so sweet that that lady was immediately trying to help me figure out my route. I got very excited when she was like, I know a way around. But then, uh, yeah, no, that's all the way out. There, There is no other road crossing the national park here, but this one. Oh, hey. There's some people. Let me ask them quickly. Hi! So it's gonna open today? No, so there is a, a really big boulder up um, Rainbow Curve right now. Oh! The trail crew and some of the road guys are trying to get that out. But yesterday we plowed all the way to ABC and it's clear now. But it's just that big boulder that's on the road. But it's uh, probably the size of that van over there. So. But, but could, could a motorcycle pass? No. <laughs> No, there's just so many vehicles. I mean, the road's open to the public, like you can hike up there, but it stops at Rainbow Curve because there's so many vehicles and people are using heavy equipment up there. Uh, I think they're planning on maybe blowing it up. So, oh, really? Yeah, because they want to open it up by the end of this weekend. Uh, you can go up there. But that's the only thing that's stopping people right now from hiking past in Rainbow Curve. Uh, big boulder there, so. Yeah, because I'm trying to get, well, I need to get to the other side because I'm riding to Wyoming. Yeah. So now I have to backtrack yeah, you're gonna have to go back down and then all the way around. Yeah. Like an hour and a half, I think, maybe? Yeah, it's far. And now it makes sense because I was like, if it's just a little bit of snow, like. Yeah. No, there's like barely any snow up there anymore. It's just that rock. It's just that rock. So it just f fell. Yeah, it just fell from the hillside. So. Nobody got injured or anything, no, like. No, no. <laughs> all right, thanks so much, yeah, man. Appreciate you. it. Okay, well, that makes more sense, because, yeah, I was thinking, right, there, there can't be that much snow, right? But yeah, you said that boulder the size of that van, so... <sighs> Luckily, nobody was there when it came down. But yeah, if they're going to blow it up, <laughs> there'll be a little bit more before it's open. So anyway, it is what it is. I'm going to make a detour. I found myself... Uh, a dirt road, very lovely, and well, I wouldn't have been here if I could pass the trail bridge road, so I guess this is just a bonus. Just following this little river here, it's really quite nice. And it's, it's very smooth dirt, so it's actually almost uh, as fast as <laughs> riding on tar. 
just a little bit more fun. Oh, wow. Okay, two things. There has been a forest fire here. A massive fire, maybe last year. Everything is burnt. And second thing, <laughs> look at what's ahead of me. I, I have no idea where this road leads to. At some point I gotta cross it. But I don't know if that's uh, on dirt or, or on tar, if there's snow or not. <laughs> I know nothing. Shame about the fire here. The locals in uh, Nederland told me that it's getting worse every year. And they were actually really happy with the snow that was uh, falling yesterday. Because they just hoped that it will help against the fires. The road is becoming a bit bigger, so I think this will actually uh, lead back to the paved road. So I don't think I'm doing any unpaved passes at the moment. Oh, this mud is a bit slippery. is so pretty here look at this you can see well that that's all burnt but then that's that's all intact that seems like the fire kind of stopped over there i just briefly stopped to kind of reorientate myself the the dirt road just ended here and i'll cross that bridge and from there it's tar and that tar road that is the that is the 14. It's this road, the 14, so I am probably, I'm somewhere here I think. So I cut across from Loveland, instead of taking the paved, I did all dirt around here until I reached now the 14. But what I really wanted to show you is that you see this little line here, this dotted line, which goes through the Rocky Mountain National Park and then all the way down. And that little line is the Great Divide. So every continent has at least one continental divide and here in the United States, the United States actually has five of them. But the main one, the biggest one and actually also the longest in the world is the Great Divide. The Great Divide kind of runs north to south straight through the US and then it continues down towards Mexico. And what it does is it divides all the water, all the rivers on the west side of the divide flow into the Pacific and on the east side of the Great Divide they flow towards the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. And well I've actually already crossed the Great Divide further south but I was really looking forward to cross it through the Rocky Mountain National Park on that Trail Ridge Road because that's one of the most, I don't know, stunning places to actually cross to the other side. So now I was kind of looking on the map where I will encounter it next. See, because it, it crosses through the Rocky Mountains, but then it takes a turn to the west and it continues here into Wyoming, over here and then up there. So I will stay on the east side of the divide and I'm guessing that I will cross it then again, I don't know, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in this area in Wyoming, I would say. See, here I will cross the river and get on the 14. See, I don't get this. Why? There's all these mailboxes here. <laughs> Just on the side of the road. But where are the people? I, I don't understand it. They must then live, I don't know, remotely or something? Fascinating. Anyway, moving on. So I've left uh, the 14. And from now it's uh, 100 kilometers left to Centennial and that's all gonna be dirt I think so <laughs> I'm happy see all of this burnt forest as well so sad right 
Everything burned. Are those, are those bison? They're bison. <gasps> oh, wow. <laughs> I did not expect to see them here yet. I thought they would be uh, more towards Yellowstone. They're bison. Oh, this is the first time in my life I see bison. Wow, they're amazing. Oh, it's so many of them. It's a whole herd. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Incredible. Wow. Oh, this is incredible. Amazing, amazing. And there in the distance, I see snow-capped mountains again. Oh, what a ride, what a ride. Centennial, 283 people. <laughs> That's not a lot. What a cute, cute town. Country Junction. Yeah, this is where I'm gonna stay. <laughs> oh, this looks so western. Oh, there's a saloon there. I love it. <laughs> The old Coral Hotel and Steakhouse. Check out my cool room. Look what it says here next to the bed. <laughs> Please remove your spurs before getting in bed. Okay, I'll, I will do that. No problem. <laughs> well, welcome to cowboy country. <laughs> I feel like I walked straight into Western. Amazing. Anyway, I saw a saloon on the other side of the road. So I'm going to see if they uh, can whip me up some food. We are talking about how um, rustic our facade is. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. No, it's amazing. I was just saying, I feel like I just walked straight into a Western movie or you, something. It is like that, huh? It is, yeah. Yeah. yeah how, how old is the place? It's not that old. The I think it's from like the 1930s or something. Oh. I don't think it's been worked on since the 1930s. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. It's awesome. The original building was a gas station. Oh. So out here were the gas pumps. And where are you from? From the Netherlands. Oh, great. I love Holland. Oh, yeah? yeah. You've been? Oh, yeah. Several times. Oh, really? Where did you go? Mostly to Amsterdam, but then uh. to Rotterdam. And of course, you have to go see the tulips. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Like <laughs> you shouldn't be on earth without going to see the tulips <laughs> in the spring. Yeah. It's nice. There. And where, where are you from? Um, originally close to Rotterdam, but I lived in Utrecht mainly. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's a great country. Yeah. And you guys have great athletes. We do. For such a little country. It is amazing. Yeah. Thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah, and I don't think you yeah. cheat. How I could not like some of the other countries. Like no, no. We, yeah. don't, we don't cheat. No. 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 Yeah, we have some good, very good athletes. Yeah. 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 Very nice. We'll go in and have right. a drink. We have yeah. some good beers. 
Thank you so much. Yes. I will. Yes. <laughs> Thank nice to meet you. Bye. Nice, Bye. nice lady. Hi. I think that's enough food. Yeah, that was it for today. Another state. I am in Wyoming right now. And well, my first impression, it's amazing. I love it here. Very different scenery from Colorado already. I saw bison. Pretty good way to start this ride in Wyoming. So that was it for today. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below and then I'll see you in the next video.